Good morning po sa inyong lahat, mga kapwa ko man ng palataya. Welcome po sa DBU Online Worship. Uh, okay, so magandang uh, blessing today. Okay, ito po si Coach Ray. At uh, nagagalap at uh, nagpupuri sa araw na ito na maging kasangkapan ng ating Panginoon para ihayag ang kanyang salita. Ang mabuting balita, dito muna po tayo sa mabuting balita. Kasi marami ang negatibong balita na naririnig natin sa ating kapaligiran. Maraming masamang balita na naririnig natin sa ating kapaligiran. So let's have this time uh, dedicated sa dalawang oras. Wala muna po tayong gawing iba kundi mag-focus tayo sa kanyang salita. Amen po. Lagi natin tatandaan that man shall not live by bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Anyway, um, bago tayo magpatuloy sa ating mensahe sa araw na ito, mga kapatid, uh, alam ko po na some of you merong, uh, tawag doon, merong konting, uh, tawag dyan, konting uh, pinagdaraan. <laughs> meron tayong konting pinagdaraanan, pero yan po ay kapahintulutan ng ating sabi nga nung awitin na si Pinos ko kanina doon sa IFO Group, um, salamat sa pagsubok na iyong pinahihim tulutan. Salamat po, Panginoon. Anyway, maalala niyo po noong unang linggo na i-share ko po sa inyo about sa life ni Abraham sa Kanilot. Ang titulo ng message na yan is about a lot of choices. Sino po sa inyo ang uh, nag-give up sa tinatawag na mahina na pagpili um, sa buhay. Okay. Sino po sa inyo ang nadrag into the place of Sodom rather than into the place of uh, of uh, ano yung lugar, yung bundok? Three, the three uh, mambre of Beersheba. Beersheba tayo okay? A place of God. Ayun. Nung Sunday po, na-share po ng mag-asawa na si Chet at sa kasihana about a maid to last forever. Wow. Pinili kasi nila na manatili hanggang kamatayan ang kanilang pangmamahal. And I love that message. Right? So, um, this morning, mga kapatid, Uh, we have this good and nice message because um, niluto ko po ito bago pa mag-second Sunday. Ganyan naman po eh, kapag ikaw ay naka, nakata, nakatalaga bilang uh, preacher sa specific schedule, kailangan mo na talagang magluto, maghanap ka ng ingredients, kailangan mong tignan kung anong mga sa hub. Diba? Then, samahan mo ng palalangin, samahan mo ng pagpapasting, samahan mo din ng personal na application kasi magiging powerful ang message kung ikaw mismo na nangangarap ay na nabubuksan ang iyong pangunan. Okay po? <laughs> so, okay, let's have this picture. Let's go sa ating PowerPoint. Okay. You see that picture? A willow tree. Yan. Sino na po sa inyo nakakita ng willow tree? Wala po tayong nakikita ng willow tree dito sa Brunei yata. Meron pero hindi siya katulad na most likely ganyan ang kanyang pagka, pagkatayo. So ano ang ibig sabihin ng willow tree before we proceed sa title message na ito? No? Willow tree, kinain niyo pa. Willow tree are suitable for moist sites in full sun. In other word, kung kayo po ay gustong mag-date, 'di ba? Gusto niyo mag mag-usap ng iyong Christianong girlfriend and boyfriend and partner na mananampalataya. Pwede pa yung mag-anak maghanap ng willow tree. Diba? Tapos mag-holding hands kayo, then nagkaroon kayo ng covenant, 
and commitment and uh, tawag doon asumpaan <laughs> sa ilalim ng willow tree. Anyway, ang willow tree, mga kapatid, uh, it will perform well in almost climate. Mapaulan, mapaaraw. That's why uh, it, it is suitable, mga kapatid. So, pero yung kanyang limbs and stem, medyo maliit, medyo hindi matibay. Diba? The limbs and stems are not strong. And it's easy to bend and break kapag meron pong storm. Yan yung napansin ko sa willow tree. Actually, aside from that, sa pick two, mga kapatid, ang willow tree, meron lamang po siyang four. Okay, let's proceed sa pick two. Ang willow tree ay meron lamang po siyang four to eight inches roots. Parang ganun, four to eight inches. Tama ba yung aking, ano? Kasi nakita ko kasi yan sa Google. <laughs> meron siyang four to eight inches na ugat. That's why it has easy to break, bend because of a shallow roots. Yun yung si Willow Tree. So today, I would love to encourage everyone that we must be deeply rooted in our faith or deeply rooted in the Word of God. Katulad ni Abraham as a Lot, as I said a while ago, mga kapatid, sila ay sinubok sa kanilang mga choices. At sa dalawang ito, nakita po natin kung sino ang mababaw sa pagpili. Nakita natin kung sino ang uh, umili na hindi may kapit ng word of God, hindi may kapit ng faith. But instead, it's more on fleshly feelings. And this is it. Nasigat yun ang feelings eh. Uh, what I'm trying to, to say, mga kapatid, is nakita natin ang kanilang mga choices. Sinubok ito kung sino yung bumigay at kung sino ang naging matibay sa pananampalataya. At ang titulo ng message na I would like to deliver to you to a church is immovable or swayable. <laughs> Yan po yung title ng message. I must be swayable or immovable in my faith. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng immovable? Immovable is not movable. Diba? Steady, firm, determined. Diba? Hindi siya na, na, natitinag kahit, kahit umiedad na, kahit single siya, or kahit walang pumapansin sa kanya. Yan yan yung immovable. Inaantay niya yung tama para sa kanya. What does it mean yung swayable? Swayable is uh, not fixed. It's easy to give up. Swayable is, alam niyo yung duyan, madaling, ano, madaling mai darang darang <laughs> Di ba? Tama po yung sabi ng James chapter uh, chapter 1. But when we ask, we must believe and do not doubt. Because he who doubt is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Sabi ng Bible, di ba? And that man, he should not receive anything from the world because he is a double-minded man and unstable in all he does. So swayable is unstable, 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 uh, <laughs> right? So... Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng swayable, not fixed, double-minded. So, as I said, I must be swayable or immovable in my faith. I must be unshakable or immovable in my faith. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Pero I would like to read from verse 3 before we, we have... Uh, verse 7, a skiver 
key, key verse today. All right, sabi sa verse 3, okay? Let me read in my Bible up. So, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with comfort we ourselves receive from God. Five, for just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Then verse six, if we are distressed, it, it is for your comfort and salvation. I like this verse six. Eh? Kung meron ka daw pagsubok, hindi dahil kawawa ka. Kung meron pagsubok or distress, it is for your comfort and salvation. Ibig sabihin eh, it is good for you diba? to strengthen your faith and to strengthen and to stabilize yung iyong relationship kay Lord. And also our comfort abound through Christ. And we have this verse 7. Sabi dun, and our hope for you is firm. Diba? Our hope for you is firm because we know that as you have, that as you share in our suffering, so also share in our comfort. Okay, praise be the word of the Lord through his, uh, praise be the name of the Lord through his word. Can we just ask you to pray a short prayer? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you this morning. Thank you for the time and privilege and favor to study your word. We pray, Father, that you will open our eyes, open our hearts, and even, Lord God, to, to uh, show me or show us the way, show us your plans, and show us, Lord God, uh, in a way that we can see things, Panginoon, uh, above. We pray that your word will be a blessing to us this, this today. We claim your blessing. We claim your healing. We claim your faith for and blessing. Holy Spirit, please help us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody who loves the Lord says, Amen and Amen and Amen. All right. So, <laughs> Ikaw ba ay immovable or swayable? Okay. Sabi ni Paul sa verse 7, and our hope for you. Si Paul is uh, talking diba, to the people of Corinth. Just like today, uh, I, uh, I am talking to DDU people and to to everyone today. Right? So, sabi ni Paul, and our hope for you is firm or steadfast because we know that just, that just as you share or partakers in our suffering, so also share or partakers in our comfort or consolation. Alam niyo kung bakit sinabi ito ni Paul sa mga mga taga Corinto. Because Paul uh, could be encouraging the people in Corinth because of their suffering. Alam naman po natin ang mga taga Corinto, sila yung pinakamahirap sabi ng Bible sa kapila ng kanilang kahirapan na ipapractice nila ang kanilang mga generosity. Doon pa lang makikita natin na yung suffering na na-experience ng mga tao kurinto, they were not swayable, they were immovable. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan doon about 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 giving, di ba? But I'm not talking about giving. Kasi sabi ni Paul doon, sa kabila ng kanilang kahirapan, hindi sila naging swayable in terms of their generosity, but instead, they were immovable and they practice faithfulness in spite of their situations, right? So, si Paul, encouraging the people in Corinth because of their suffering, and, and Paul had this radically different view 
of suffering. Yung, yung gustong ipunto ni Paul, mga kapatid, is uh, yung suffering, especially trials and discomfort, sabi ni Paul sa mga talakori, gamitin yung pagkakataong yung suffering, yung, uh, kap, yung kapighatian na yan, sabi ni Paul sa mga talakori, para sa advancement of Christ's kingdom. Yun yung gustong ipunto. Very radical na yung view niya. Diba? Because it, it is God's way of allowing Christian to become more like Jesus. To suffer for the gospel just as Jesus suffered for it. Diba alam niyo yung sabi ni Paul doon sa Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Sabi ni Paul doon, I want to know Christ. How many of you na gusto niyong makilala si Kristo? Please take time to, to know Christ. Pag kilala mong kilala mo si Kristo, hindi ka na masusurprise sa lahat ng mga troubles and testing sa personal na buhay mo. Kasi kilala mo na si Kristo. Kasi sabi ni Paul, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship sharing in His suffering and becoming like Him in His death. Wow! Yun yung pinagpuporsigihan ni, ni Paul. Alam nyo kung bakit? Speaking about suffering, di ba? marami kasing nagsway sa kanilang pananampalataya. Many Christians no, live under the false idea that God wants them to suffer. Maraming ganyan mga Kristiyano kapag meron silang uh, pagsubok, meron silang pinagdaraanan. Alam mo yung pa-victim mentality tayo. Ang mga taga po rin to, hindi sila pa-victim mentality. Pa-heavenly mentality sila. <laughs> Di ba? Yes, suffering is inevitable. Ang, ang pagsubok ay hindi mo maiiwasan, mga kapatid. But God is not glorified through our suffering. Kapag pa-victim mentality tayo, tayo, pag mayroon tayong suffering, He is glorified when we have good attitude during our suffering. Because God wants us to be victorious. Amen. Diba sabi doon sa James chapter 1 verse 3, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces suffering. Amen po. Maraming nga yung kristyano na gano'n na parang, ay kalooban ng Diyos na ako yung nag-suffer. Hindi. Pinahintulutan ng Diyos na ikaw ay mag-suffer or matest kasi gusto niyang i-advance mga patid yung kalakasan or maranasan mo yung kanyang kalakasan para sa iyo. Kaya minsan maraming tao kapag ini-scolding mo pa victim mentality instead na harapin. It's easy for them to sway about or to, sh- to shake their faith. Wait, let me emphasize. Suffering, ang mga current people, they suffered because of the word. Not because they are, they are poor. Mga kapatid, they are, uh, they are not in the capacity financially. They, 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 they are suffering because of the word. They love the word. They follow the word of God. They, their suffering is because of their conviction. Diba? Yung kanilang suffering because of the spirit-filled determination. They want to, 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 grow, to grow up in their faith. Diba? Ang kanilang suffering because of the righteous stand. Diba? Kahit pinagalitan ako, pinagsabihan ako, kailangan tumayo pa rin ako sa katuwiran ng Panginoon. Yun yung nakikita ni Paul sa mga taga-Korinto. Ang suffering ng mga taga-Korinto because of the godly principle in life. Yun yung gustong uh, ipunto ni Apostle Paul to the Korinto people. So kapag tayo nagsasuffer because of the word or if you involve the word in your life, or in your suffering, then there will be comfort. Di ba yung sabi ni Paul kanina? Tingnan nyo, 
And our hope for you is film because we know that just as you share in our sufferings and also you share in our comfort. Parang sinasabi ni Pablo, habang sineshare ninyo yung pagsubok ninyo, lumalakas kami, nararanasan namin yung, yung yakap ng Diyos. Ganun ang, ang uh, view ni Paul. Dapat ganyan din yung ating view. Pag meron kasi tayong pagsubok, eh, nag-down to pa-victim mentality tayo kay Lord. <laughs> so, mga kapatid, um, tinan nyo, balikan lang ulit natin yung 2 Corinthians 1 sa Bedi, nandiyan pa naman yan. Paul said to Corinth, and our hope for you is fear. Ang other uh, word ng fear is steadfast. Steadfast is, putulin natin yan sa dalawa, stead. Stead is place. Fast is fixed. Kung saan ka man naroroon, naroroon ngayon, naka-stead ka lang sa isang lugar, eh steady ka. ba? Diba? Then yung fast is fixed. Kaya sabi ni Paul, and our hope for you is steadfast. Kahit ako nakakulong ngayon, sabi ni Pablo, ako ay hindi nalulungkot dahil nakikita ko, di ba, ang inyong pananampalataya is, is steadfast. Parang ganito. Kung ako si Apostle Pablo, parang si Joy, merong positive ngayon si Joy sa COVID. Joy, hindi ako nalulungkot sa iyo, sa kalagayan mo. Bagkus, na-encourage ako, nararanasan ko, nakikita ko yung comfort ng Panginoon. ba diba? Nakikita ko yung steadfastness mo in your faith. Parang ganon. <laughs> Nalaman tuloy nila na si Joy ay nagkaroon ng red coat. And hindi po sabi ko kayo, hindi siya, hindi yan red coat. Yan po ay rest coat. And time to commune. Time to help read the word of God. Time to listen to His voice. Makinig ka, Joy. Hindi yung, ito yung time na maglaro ka ng ML. Hindi ito yung time na magbabad ka sa pakikinig lamang ng mga drama. This is the time to commune sa presence ng Almighty God. So take note. Anong klaseng suffering mo sa buhay? Diba? Bilang mananampalataya. At kung ano yung suffering mo na pinagdataanan, ikaw ba ay immovable or swayable? Alright. Dadalhin ko po kayo sa Old Testament. Mga kapatid po. Iko-connect natin ang karakter ni Aaron from the title of this message, Swayable. Kilala niyo po si Aaron? Di ba? Yun. Ano ba itong sway of Aaron's life? Ayun. Pero bago natin i-digest yan, mga kapatid, tignan muna natin yung vital statistic or profile ni Aaron. Si Aaron po, siya po yung nakakatandang kapatid ni Moses. Tama ba po? Kapatid siya ni Moses, kapatid siya ni Miriam, at si Aaron, siya po ay... Uh, may apat na anak, si Nadab, si Abihu, si Eliasar, at saka si Itamar. Amen po. Siya ay second in command sa leadership ni Moses. And aside from that, sila po yung tribo ng Levita. Yan, yan po yung profile ni Aaron. Just to let you know, mga kapatid. So, ano ba itong sway? S-W-A-Y. Deny yes ko po yan. Letter S is, ano yung significant responsibility of Aaron? Amen po. Okay? So, tingnan natin, no? diba? So, si Aaron, mga kapatid, diba, he was... Uh, Chosen by God. Diba? Siya po ay pinili. Chosen by God. Selected by God. And set apart 
from God. Pinili din siya ng Panginoon kung paano pinili si Moses. Exodus chapter 4 verse 27 And the Lord said to Aaron, mga kapatid, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Ito yung time na si Moses, di ba, nag-stow uh, away? Tama ba? Nag-tumakas uh, siya from Egypt because of some circumstances. Yung suffering or circumstances na binagdaraanan ni Moses, eh, talagang mahirap yun. Kaya pumunta siya sa wilderness. And from the wilderness, mga kapatid, doon yung nakilala ang Panginoon. Na-meet niya si God or na-encounter niya si God from the place of wilderness. Yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Sa mga sufferings natin, it can, it can be a blessing, mga kapatid, or it can be a curse. It depends if you are movable, immovable or swayable when you are facing any testing of this life. Ngayon, sabi ni God kay Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet your brother Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Saan sila nag-meet doon sa mountain of God? Just want you to know, alam nyo, bibihira at iilan lang ang nakaka-encounter sa Panginoon. Especially sa panahon po natin ngayon. Sa panahon ngayon, ang daming distraction. Distraction sa puso. Distraction sa pera. Distraction po sa pananampalataya mo. Distraction po sa kasama mo sa bahay, sa opisina, sa kapaligiran, sa love life mo. I don't know. <laughs> kung ano yung mga ang ang mga distractions mo that you have today pero alam mo mga kapatid iilan lang yung nakaka-encounter sa Panginoon at isa diyan si Aaron mga kapatid iilan na nga lang nakaka-encounter iilan pa din yung nakakasunod sa Panginoon pagkatapos marinig ang tinig ng Diyos nung marinig ng marinig ni Aro ni Aaron ang tinig ng Diyos. Hindi po siya nagdalawang isip para sumunod and to meet his brother Amen, in the wilderness. Ganyan po ba tayo? That's why we can see here the significant responsibility of Aaron apatid, as chosen and selected by God and he obeyed God for the specific role. Alam niyo ginawa ni, ginawa ni Aaron? Ano yung role niya kay Moses? He provided Moses with one skill. Moses lack. Diba? To become effective public speaking or magiging mouthpiece. Kaya si, si, si Aaron became spokesman. Another S is spokesman. Hallelujah. Aside from selected by God, chosen by God, and set apart from God, si Aaron, mga kapatid, ay naging spokesman ni, Aaron, ni Moses. Hallelujah. Sa so, totoo lang, mga kapatid, mahirap maging spokesperson. Diba? Especially kapag ikaw ay spokesperson ng king or ng president. Di ba? Mahirap kasi lahat ng bashers ng presidente, bashers mo na din. <laughs> Ganyan yung nangyayari, di ba? <laughs> Kaya mahirap po ang maging spokesperson. And yun po yung specific na role ni Aaron to become the spokesperson of Moses, kasi si Moses, ang problema niya, hindi pa siya eloquent to speak or eloquent na magbigay, mag-deliver ng kanyang message. So, during that time, bakit siya naging spokesperson, mga kapatid? Kasi meron din po silang pandemic ng panahong yun. Alam niyo yung 10 plague? Di ba? So kailangan ni Moses ang magsalita to the Hebrew people 
at magsalita to the authority of Egypt on that time. Right? Yeah, yun yung role niya. Diba? Na every time merong pinasasabi ang Diyos kay Moses, sinasabi naman ni Moses kay Aaron, at si Aaron sinasabi naman niya sa mga tao ng Diyos at sa mga taga Egypto na there will be the plan. You have to bow down. You have to obey. You have to go in back. Parang ganang spokesperson, me. Eh. Diba? So, would you imagine? And Aaron stood fast and he did a great job. I would like to encourage you, church, kung gusto mo na lang din maging marites, mga kapatid, ishare mo na si Jesus. Stop sharing the the bad the bad things to the other people na enough na siguro yan tama na po kasi wala tayong makikita ng mabuti din kasi babalik at balik sa atin <laughs> so <laughs> let us become mouthpiece of the lord just like uh what Aaron did right because we are in the pandemic so many people na sa suffer financially spiritually so many people so many christian na sa suffer na kanila mga decision makings and i want you to become the spokesperson of the lord and being spokesman of god sometimes ang mga sasabihin mo is not favorable minsan mapait but it will give life diba kaya minsan kapag kayo magpayo sa mga tao gusto yung payuhan, especially sa kapwa natin mga mananampalataya, kahit masakit, sabihin nyo na because the truth will set them free. Right? So, like Moses, hindi niya iniwan si, uh, like Aaron, si Aaron hindi niya iniwan si Moses, including the Hebrew people, and he became supporter of Moses. In kanina, spokesman and he became supporter right so let me flex this why Aaron become a supporter see Aaron made a good team player to Moses very supportive as a matter of fact when Moses hands became heavy or grew tired Aaron and poor took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up so that Moses' hands remained steady or steadfast or immovable until sunset. We can find that in Exodus chapter 17 verse 12. Wow, I like your life ni Aaron. He became supporter. Kapatid, kung gusto mo maging significant responsibility yung buhay mo as a Christian, kapatid, pinili ka na lang din ng Diyos, nagpaka-Kristyano ka na lang din, set apart mo na yung life mo sa world, di ba? Maging mouthpiece ka, spokesperson, and became a supporter, a, a part of the team, right? <laughs> so, ano application, mga kapatid? Christians, this is all for me. Hello, Christians. May significant responsibility ka. You are selected. You are chosen by God to become a spokesperson or mouthpiece to share Jesus for the advancement of God's kingdom here on earth. What is your significant responsibility here on earth? Sabi doon sa Matthew chapter 15, verse 16, Let your light shine before men. Dapat po tayo ang magliliwanag sa mga hindi, sa mga nadidiliman. Hindi pwede yung, yung dilim, yun ang magbibigay ng dilim sa iyo. Sabi ng Bible, being or having a significant responsibility, let your light shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. Because in times of pandemic, in times of crisis, in times of plague, it is when light is needed most. 
ulitin ko po, let your light shine before me. Because in times of darkness, mga kapatid, in times of crisis or pandemic, it is when light is needed most. This is our purpose and calling. Enough is enough to act in maturity. Diba? Being pasway-sway or pasaway or pakray-kray. This is the time to level up the light of Jesus in you. This is the time to be mature. Mga kapatid, this is your, this is our calling. This is our purpose. This is our significant responsibility as Christian. Can you please type amen? Or can we see the heart? This a comment section natin. Wow. Amen po? In that way, di ba tinin nyo si Aaron? Ano yung kapansanan ni Moses? Pautal-utal. Hindi lahat ng minsan ng leader is perfect. Merong kakulangan sa mga mga leader. Sometimes, ang mga leader ay uh, hindi sila kaakit-akit. Di ba? Kaya minsan huwag niyong tignan ang isang leader ninyo ay idulong-idulong niyo na. Na his or he or she is almost perfect. Si Moses tinan mo. Di ba? Sa kanyang kapansanan, merong Aaron, merong Hur. Right? So, that's our role. Okay. Moving on. After na si Aaron selected by God, chosen and set apart by God, may nag-level up siya. Mga kapatid, yung W is meron na siyang cloak of uh, you know uh, uh, wardrobe syndrome. Meron na siyang um, medyo nag-level up na siya. Dito na siya uh, tingnan nyo, tingnan mo natin. Okay, thank you for the picture, Ate Alice. Ayan na si Moses. Ay si si Aaron. Si Aaron, wala pang shoot niyan. Diba? Nung siya tawagin ng Diyos, nag-level nag up lang siya. Dapat ganyan tayo. Pag tayo ay pinili, inawag na maging supporter and spokesperson ni God, level up tayo. Diba po? Si, Mo, si Aaron nag-level up. Diba? Naging first high priest. Diba? Exodus chapter 28 verse 1 to 2. Tingnan nyo ah. Tingnan natin kung paano siya nag-level up. Diba? Nagang immovable siya sa kanyang uh, commitment. Have Aaron, your brother, brought to you from among the Israelites along with his son, Nadab and Abihu Eliezer and Itamar, so they may serve me as priests, make sacred garments to your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. Wow! Yan yung tinan mo, kapag ikaw ay nagpapatuloy sa iyong pagkatawag ng Panginoon and you're not swayable or, or shakeable in your faith, wow, there this growing stage for you. There is this favor. Diba itataas ka ng Panginoon from being medyo walang walang grado and Aaron became uh, became uh, including his son and naging priest. And I like the word dignity and honor. Christian, nung tinanggap mo si Kristo bilang Diyos at nakapagligtas, kristyano ka na, meron kang dignidad, meron kang honor. Huwag mo pong hayaan na masisira po yan. Diba? Kapag nangako ka, gawin mo. Kasi kapag nangako ka, hindi mo ginawa, masisira ang dignity and honor mo. Diba? So, let me flex. From being chosen, selected, and supporter, Now, formally, si Aaron formally, officially ordained as high priest 
of Israel. Wow! Siya yung kauna-una ang high priest. Would you imagine yung, yung level na inita, inaas sa kanya ng ating Panginoon? And let me flex, mga kapatid, because alam niyo ba, the more na minsan na pinagpapahala, itinataas tayo ng Panginoon, there is this weakness or void or it can be space na kapag hindi mo ito binigay sa Panginoon, pwedeng lalaki yung ulo. So, ano ba itong wardrobe syndrome of Aaron? Mga anak ng Diyos, what clothe you by the way? Anong sinusuot mo ngayon? Meron ka bang dalawang kasuotan? Di ba? Kristiyano ka ba na meron ka bang damit na Kristiyano? Then after that, pag matapos yung gawa mo Kristiyano, isusuot mo yung damit mo na sanlibutan. So what cloth you by the way? Si Aaron have the cloth of God's favor and blessing in his life. He have these garments of glory in his life. Tingnan niyo yung picture, di ba? Talagang presentable. Kasi ikaw ang mangunguna sa mga pagsamba. Ikaw ang mangunguna sa pag-aalay, sa pag sa paghahandog uh, ng ating Panginoon. Now, please take note. When Aaron officially ordained to be the first high priest of God in Israel, syempre, kasamang tumaas yung clamor, yung demand. Di ba? Pag nandun ka sa taas, listen carefully. Napansin nyo ba yan? Masarap po, di ba? It is good being on top, right? But it is very hard when you are there. Pag nandun ka na sa taas, very dangerous. There is this demand, there is this clamor. There is this big or huge responsibility. Just to let you know. Sabi nga ni Willie Rivillian eh, mahirap maging mayaman. Dahil kapag maging mayaman ka, ang dami rin ang sumusunod sa iyo. Because you're almost perfect. Diba? Pag ikaw ay mayaman, ang dami mo rin bayarin. Ang dami mo rin iniisip. Kaya mahirap maging mayaman, mga kapatid. Mahirap minsan ang nandung ka sa taas kung hindi mo nakasama ang Panginoon. I would like to caution mga taga-IFO kahit anong pagpapala ang makatanggap ninyo sa Diyos. Kahit milyon-milyon pa yan. Huwag ninyong hayaan na makontaminate ang puso at isip at ang ating relasyon para sa Panginoon. Gayahin natin si uh, Kaya natin yung si Balaam. Balaam said, Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and wood, I cannot do anything against from the Lord. I will follow the Lord. So, are you still with me? Siyempre, nung tamaas ang level ni Aaron bilang pari, tumaas yung demand, yung clamor, ng Israel sa kanya. Nag-level up din yung kanyang popularity. Nag-level up din yung pressure. Di ba? That's why when you are on the top, you have to maintain the perfect image to the people. Kaya nga minsan, huwag natin dayain yung perfect image natin. Mas maganda makikita nila yung faults and shortcomings natin. Di ba? Huwag mong ipakita na you have the guts. Di ba? Kasi yung, yun yung perfect image na gusto mong ipakita sa tao, would you imagine that? Very dangerous yan. Kung mahirap ka, mahirap ka. Kung minsan eh, kung ano yung kapansano mo, let them know. Huwag mong hayaan na takpan ng kasinungalingan. Amen po. And what, what happened to Aaron? Di ba? 
kailangan niyang i-maintain yung perfect image as the high priest of Israel, the clamor, the pressure, and the demand of the people is there until Aaron came to compromise his standard as a priest. Diba? Kaya, kita niyo, diba? Yung letter A, tinan mo, sa letter A na yan, tumaas yung kanyang alter ego. Ano yung S? Significant responsibility. Yung W, wardrobe syndrome. And letter A is, yung level up, tumaas yung kanyang alter ego. Umaban si Aaron. <laughs> It is hard when you are on the top. As I said a while ago, nothing else is visible but down to the ground. Kasi pag nandun ka sa taas, wala ka ng choice nandun sa baba. Amen po. So, ganyan po ba tayo? Pag tayo po ba pinagpapala, nagiging arrogante tayo. Pag tayo naging pagpapala, hindi natin napapahalagaan yung ating dignity and honor. So, si Aaron, tumaas ang kanyang ego, the pressure, the stress, the toxicity of life being popular, bumigay si Aaron, and it has altered his ego. At alam niyo ang kanyang unang executive proclamation order na ginawa as high priest of Israel. Diba? Ang unang kanyang executive proclamation order to give to the clamor and demand of the people of Israel. Ayan, sa verse, ter, chapter 30, verse 1 and 5. Would you imagine when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain? Kasi may pagkakataon na kinakausap ni Moses, si God, at medyo natagalan ng konti ang mga tao na inip. Diba? Ang mga tao na balisa. So, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around and Aaron said, Tignan niyo yung kanyang first proclamation. Sabi niya, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for his fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. The people clamors right and Aaron answered them take off the gold earrings that your wives your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring to me so all the people looked of their earrings and brought them to Aaron he took what they hand, handed him and made it into him an idol cast in the shape of a cow, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, This is your God, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the cow and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. Naging arrogante kasi gumawa sila ng ribultong baka. Amen po. They have made diba, these idols. Wow. What happening to Aaron? What happening to us? Alam nyo nangyari din po sa akin yan. Just to let you know, hindi po ko exempted bilang pastor nyo. Nung ako po ay tumataas ang level ng pagkapala, yung unang pages ng life ko na naka-experience ko po yung blessing ika nga ng Panginoon, pero merong konting mot motivations ng blessing na yun. Wow. Tumaas po yung ego ko, tumaas po yung antas ng buhay ko, lalo na nagkaroon po ako ng Honda City na 2010 model. Wow. Yabang ni Pastor Ray noon. Grabe ang yabang ko noon. Sa totoo lang po. Pero, Bilang high priest, tinawag ng Panginoon, I've learned a big bang lesson sa life ko. 
Grabe. Kasi hindi ko na handle yung pressure. Naging idol ko yung dami ng pera. Grabe. Na bago ng material ang aking pag-uugali. And it can be happen to you. Pwede rin din ito mangyari sa iyo. Pwede kang baguhin ng material na bagay kung si Aaron na hindi na satisfied as the first high priest of Israel, as the spokesperson of Hebrew people, as chosen and set apart from the Lord. Kung hindi siya na satisfied doon, it can be happened to you. Right? Naging shakeable yung kanyang conviction. Na bago si Aaron ng wardrobe principle, he became arrogant, conceited, and man pleaser. Yung wardrobe syndrome principles is very dangerous. Especially when you are clothed with blessings. Dito nalalantad ang pag-uugali natin kapag tumataas ang antas ng level ng buhay natin. Nagbabago tayo. Nawawala yung holy conviction. Nawawala yung spirit-filled determination. Nawawala yung godly principle. And I pray this will, this will serve as a lesson sa ating lahat. Especially Ikaw at ako, there is this huge blessing that coming from you when you are there and when you have that. Huwag mabago yung holy conviction, yung spiritual determination, at saka yung godly principles. Napansin nyo ba? Napansin nyo ba sarili nyo? Huwag na tayo lalayo. Napansin nyo ba ang sarili nyo? Diba? Kapag umaangat tayo, nababago ang ating pag-uugali. Ako lang na nakapansin nun. Alam ko, ganyan ka din eh. Napansin mo din yan eh. Di ba? Kapag umaangat tayo, sumosobra yung ating angas, naging spoiled brat tayo, maging, alam mo, kaya nga minsan eh, nadelikado. That's why I will ask you this question. Will we be consistent in our conviction? What if ang bumabalo sa atin ngayon is pandemic. Buti na lang may pandemic. Buti na lang merong virus. May plague. <laughs> diba? Buti na lang merong ganitong klase ng sitwasyon na lahat tayo ay nagsasuffer ng protocol. Lahat tayo nagsasuffer ng on... Ng, I, 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 hindi ko kinitignan na suffering itong online worship but just to let you know, ako personally is affected because I want face to face. Everyone is affected because of this pandemic. And the Lord allowed these things to happen to humble us, to teach us a lesson na ang pera na yan, kahit sino ka pa, hindi sa pakya kung wala si Kristo sa buhay. Right? Now, ikaw ba ay swayable or immovable? Nag-sway si Aaron sa kanyang principle at conviction. Meron isang kwento dito kay Aaron eh. Nung tumaas ang level niya, nagkaroon siya ng altered ego. Ano niyo yung numbers? Sa book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 2, basahin niyo po yan. Diba? Dahil wala na siyang magawa, sinunod niya mga tao, Di ba pinangunahan niya mga tao gunawa ng idol? Grabe. Meron pa itong ano ito? Tinay yung tinay yung yung verse 1 to 5. Hindi Ate Alice. Yung kanina. Tingnan niyo yung sabi ni Aaron. Wala na yung respeto kay Moses. Sabi niya. Sabi niya, "Come make us gods who will go before us as for his fellow Moses." who brought us above Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Very dangerous. You cannot talk. 
give accounts to your brother as selected and chosen by God. You cannot, you, you cannot malign Moses. Wow, very dangerous po yan. Ginawa ni Aaron. Bakit niya nagawa yan? Kasi tumaas nga yung kanyang level. Parang tingin niya ka sa kanyang sarili. Yung pautal-utal na yan, ang tagal eh. Mas magaling pa ako sa kanya eh. Oops! Yan minsan, dumadating na minsan yung ating altered ego na mas magaling ako kay elder, mas magaling ako dito, mas magaling ako kay pastor, mas magaling si Ganire, mas magaling si dito, mas magaling dito sa church, mas magaling. Yan na po papasok yung idols. Or idolatry. Amen po. Doon sa Numbers 12 verse 2, alam mo nang usap silang dalawa ng kanyang kapatid na si Miriam. Merong konting marites dyan eh. <laughs> sa number, sabi, ni Mary, uh, sabi ni Miriam, sabi niya, Aaron, sino yung kapatid natin si Moses? Siyempre, di naman talaga yata nila kapatid na ano yun. Di ba? Di na, saan na yung pautal-utal na yun? Ba't ang tagal niya? Di ba? Ikaw na nga maglit sa Israel. Alam mo nung ginawa nila yun nung nagsalita sila against kay Moses, nagkaroon ng ketong si Miriam. <laughs> Yan po yung nagagawa ng being angat. Because kapag umangat ang lahat sa iyo, ingatan mo rin baka ma-alter even your ego. Right? So, after that, Nung gumawa ng ganyang kabalastugan si Aaron, ano po ang nangyayari sa kanya? Or ano po ang nangyayari kapag na-altered na ang iyong ego? Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, huwag na tayo lumayas sa personal testimony ko. Nung tumaas ang ego ko, eh syempre walang choice. Meron yung why is yucky results. There is this yucky results. Yung why dyan. Diba? Yung S is significant responsibility. Yung W is wardrobe syndrome. Yung A is altered ego. And Y is there is this yucky result. Gumawa ka ng kabalastugan, nagyabang ka. Siyempre, ang katapat niya, di ba sabi ng Bible, ang nagmamataas, ipabagsak ng Diyos. Biblical po. Let's see this yucky results. Alam niyo po ba maging yung anak ni Aaron na impluensyahan niya ah kapatid ng kanyang pagmamayat. That's why you have to be careful to your kids kung ano yung nakikita nila sa iyo yun ang kanilang gagayahin. Amen po. And I love the kids of I mga IF kids. Kasi nakikita nila, tingnan nyo, kaya ngayon nagkaroon po ako ngayon ng isang burden na ilagay na natin lagi ang mga kids natin, i-practice na natin sila, i-disciple na natin sila. Yung pamangkin ni Carlo, grabe. He's talking about discipleship. Oh my God. Ilang taon na yung anak pamangkin mo, Carlo. When you are disciples of Jesus Christ, wow. <laughs> Grabe, nakaka-bless yung mga, mga bata. So, please encourage your kids to join sa prayer online. Huwag niyong patulan sila na hindi nahihiya sila. Please, kailan natin sila tuturuan? Ngayon na po, pilitin natin sila. Kahit wala silang camera muna, let them speak, let them share, let them, let them uh, tawag daw shine. Huwag natin lang gayahin si Aaron na ipinakita niya yung kanyang kayabangan sa mga tao ng Diyos and even to his kids. <laughs> and what happened? What, what, what the yaka results? Verse 1, Aaron's son, Nadab, and Abihu took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered an authorized fire before the Lord. Wow! Alam mo, let me emphasize this about unauthorized. Another term of unauthorized is profane. Wow. 
ito, kabalastugan yung ginawa nila. Saan nila nakuha yan? Sa tatay nila. Parang nag-usap itong apat ng anak niya, si tatay niya, si tatay aarong niya. Gumawa siya ng baka na ginto and they worship and they encourage the people to have festival. Eh, gawin din natin. Tayo naman yung iniwan ng tatay natin to offer. Anong ginawa nila? They offered unauthorized. They profane. Meron palang ganyan, ano? Before the Lord is command. Meron palang ganyan yung bas... Ah, sorry for the words. Ha? Meron pala yung ganyan na bastos na pagsamba. Kasi pag sinabing unauthorized or profane is bastos na pagsamba. Kabastusan, kabalastugan yung ginawa ng mga anak ni Aaron. It can be happened to our kiddos. Kapag nakita nila ng ating pagsamba ay parang walang pagpapahalaga, mga kapatid, maniniwala ba ang mga anak mo? ba? Diba? Kaya nga kapag araw ng pagsamba, ipakita mo sa kanila na sumasamba ka kahit online, mamaya ka na magluto, mamaya ka na magpagkwentuhan mo na si pag nakita ng mga anak mo yun, huwag natin hayaan sila natutulog lang, please. Let them join diba, at our online worship. This is very important part ng life natin. Ang pagtulog mamayang gabi, maraming time sa pagtulog, pero yung time sa pagsamba, bipihira lang. And that is our mission and purpose to worship because we were created to worship God. Please. Yung anak ko nga, misal pinapadalhan ko siya ng mga link. Sabi niya, paano ba itong link na ito? Hindi ko alam itong link na ito. Sabi ko, pangbihira ka. Alam mo ang lahat ng tungkol sa mga Googles and Googles and internet and online school. Ito simple lang. Please join. Diba kahit naiinis siya talaga, sige. Eh pa, mag-join ako. Pero hindi ko na ilagay yung pangalan ko ha. Okay lang, basta mag-join ka. And you will see me live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mahirap talaga maging tatay. Pero sa tulong ng Diyos, sa biyaya ng Diyos, makakausad po tayo. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So what happened? What happened when they offered an authorized or profane fire before the Lord? Contrary to his command. Verse 2, tignan nyo. What's the yucky results here? The fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Wow. Yung anak ni Aaron because of Aaron's outer ego na employee sa niya ng mga kapatid kinonsyong sila ng Panginoon ng apoy na matay sila. Tinupok sila ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng apoy. At may kinalaman ang tatay mo si Aaron bakit ito nangyari sa kanila. Kung naging maayos lang sana si Aaron, naging maayos sana ang pagpe-perform ng duties ng kanyang mga anak. Because they were chosen, they were selected, and set apart from it. Christians and people of the Lord, I just want to encourage you. Binigyan ka ng task ng Panginoon. Binigyan ka ng Panginoon ng titulo as anak ng Panginoon. Please perform that. Kung ano yung kaya. Don't just do it in an authorized way and act. Just do it wholeheartedly before the Lord. Not for DT, not for everyone. Amen po. I-please natin sila. Sabi ko nga eh, tingnan nyo, grabe yung yate result. Sino ba tayo? Ano ba tayo kapag pinagpapala? Sino ba tayo at ano ba tayo kapag walang pagpapala? Kumusta yung ating significant responsibility? 
inaayos pa natin. Kumusta po yung wardrobe syndrome or wardrobe if we receive more blessing from the Lord? Kumusta po yung altered ego natin kapag pinagpapala tayo ng Panginoon? And this is the things to ponder. Are you ready? Kita naman po ninyo yung sway. Pag-sway ng mga anak ni Aaron sa kanila Aaron. So let's move on. What's, what is these things to ponder? How do you want to live your life? How do you want to live your life? Sinking? Survival? Stability? Success? Or significance? How do you want to live your life? Especially, meron tayo ngayon pandemic. Napansin ko sa mga kapatiran, nakita ko minsan sa mata ko kung sino ang nagpapatuloy, kung sino ang kung sino yung masidhi sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. With due respect to everyone, I have I received this commendation kay Pastor Conrad. Sabi ni Pastor Conrad, Pastor Ray, ang dami naman ninyo nakijoin sa Bible study program natin dito sa Pilipino. Eh sabi ko, minsan lang nagkaroon ng pagkakataon na mayroong ganitong klase na pag-aaral online. Libre lang naman. Why not? Wala naman akong in-encourage dyan. Inilagay ko lang yung post. <laughs> Kaya po, mga nakajoy doon sa Bible, please, on time, mag-online tayo. Amen po ba? So, how do you live? How do you want to live your life? Paurong? Stability? Survival? Survive ako ngayon? Ang spiritual life? Success? Gusto mong success? Gusto mong pogi? Gusto mong maganda? Gusto mong umaman? Gusto mong lahat? Or gusto mong significance? Saan ka dyan? Type-type nga po kayo dyan. Saan po kayo dyan? Saan kayo? Nasa sinking stage ba kayo? Survival stage, stability stage, success stage, or significant stage? Iga nga po. <laughs> type. If we choose to become significant, then we have to be steadfast, immovable, godly principle, spirit-filled determination, and righteous stand if you want to be significant. Amen po? Napaan natin na natin. Alam niyo, kausap ko isang araw yung tatay ko. Ang tatay ko po ay nasa 82 years old na hindi ko lang naibigay kay ate Alice yung picture ng tatay ko. Matanda na po yung tatay ko. Kung nakikita po ninyo ako sa isad na 50, mag-50 dito na po ako sa next Saturday, 26 birthday date, 52 years old na po ako. Wala na. Kung nakikita niyo ako, medyo bata-bata pa, medyo iangat niyo po mga 40, 30 years. Tanda na yung tatay ko. Sabi ng tatay ko, na, Sabi niya, lagi ako nag-pepray. Wow. Salamat na meron akong anak na pastor. At uh, alam ko na malapit na yung buhay ko. Kasi yung tatay ko mahina na talaga siya. Pero hanggat buhay pa ako, hindi ako hihindu mag-pray. Hanggat hindi mapuputol yung ating na. Mamamatay na lang ako na tumatawag sa Diyos. Sino bang matutuwa? Diba? Si Nanay Dora, ikausap ko rin po yung kanyang apo, pinasasabi ng kanyang apo, kasi one time si Nanay Dora, from Laguna, Kapuyo, ang layo ng kanyang bahay, siguro mula dito sa PH, hanggang doon yata sa SKH, QAP, nilalakad po niya yan. At the age of 70, Para pumunta sa church, sa Kapuyaw, ang layo po ng bahay nila. Nilalakad po. And one time, 
nung nandun po ako na nagpapasto, sabi ko, Nanay Dora, ano po ba nagmamotivate sa inyo? Sabi ko sa kanya, sa paglilingkod niyo. Sabi niya, hanggat ako nabubuhay, sabi niya, maglilingkod ako sa Diyos. Hanggat malakas pa ako, hanggat nakakalakad pa ako, hanggat malinaw-linaw pa mata ko, hanggat hindi pa ako nahihilo, I will serve the Lord. Grabe kasi yung medikansi. Yung kanyang panata sa atin. Nawa all. Maging katulad tayo ni Nanay Dora. I will encourage you to you people. Hallelujah. So palitan ko lang po yung sway sandali ng magandang ibig sabihin as we end this message. Yung sway is steadfast. Worshiping always. Amazingly beautiful. And years of blessing. Amen po. So, tayo po ba ay pasway, sway? Swayable ba tayo sa ating pananampalataya? Sa ating pagkakilala sa Diyos? Ano sway? Yung, alam mo yung do yan? Walang direction? Or immovable? Kahit may pagsubok sa pera, kahit may pagsubok sa kakalusugan, kahit may pagsubok sa spiritual na buhay, sa pamilya, magpapatuloy ako. Ako ay lalong maging steadfast, mag-worship, amazingly beautiful. How is it? Having the Lord in my heart. And years and years to come. It will not be boring, but it will be a blessing. That's why, sabi po sa 1 Corinthians verse 15, chapter 15, verse 58, ang sabi po dyan, My dear brothers, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is nothing. Can we see the picture of DDU people? Can we see the picture of immovable people? Sige nga po. Tas nga po ng kamay yung mga immovable dyan. Kahit anong mangyari. Wow. Can we just have this, di ba, mighty hands for the Lord? Come on. Wow. Again and again, sabi po doon, my dear brothers, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work for the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let me just close our eyes. Let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa aming natutunan ngayong gabi. Salam sa ngayong araw na ito. Salamat po, Panginoon, dahil ako'y pinagpala mo, pinles mo sa buhay ni Aaron. Ninong Diyos, mas ko pong iaalay ang buhay mo sa iyo bilang haing banan biyang harapat na pansin. Turuan mo ako na matuto sa buhay. Patatagin mo ako kung ano mong pagsukin. Meron akong pinagdaraan. Gamitin mo itong opportunity upang ako'y lubago o upang ako'y lumipad at ikaw ang aking ibabantila. Ito kong isubo sa inyo ang swayable na puso ko Enough is enough. Yung paiba-iba ng isip. I will be determined to follow to serve this week. In Jesus' name, everyone who loves the Lord says, Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Bubbles!
Jesus will be praised. God bless you, TDU people. See you next week. <laughs>